everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. It is time to get this bass working. The pickups have arrived, I've got some flat wound strings and I've got rehearsal in about 45 minutes. The first thing is going to be putting some strings on so I can work out exactly where they will sit so that I can line these pickups up just right. Um, I'm using the Seymour Duncan SCPB2s. Uh, I had originally wanted the SCPB3s but I just could not find two of them. Um, uh, I managed to find one of them, uh, and then there was a problem with the uh, uh, the supplier thought they had a second one, but it turned out to be an SPB3, which is the standard uh, split coil precision bass pickup. It's not really what I wanted, so uh, I wound up going for the SCPB2s, which are like a uh, uh, the vintage reissue uh, uh, pickups, but uh, Seymour Duncan just made those louder, uh, and then of course the quarter pounders are a whole. A, a, a bit more louder again. Um, so they're a little bit, uh, a little bit of a hybrid, um, but they should sound good. The original pickups that would have been in this bass would have been single coils and probably voiced about the same as these. Uh, in fact, I'm expecting that with the pickup placement, because I, I, I these are designed to go on a bass about there, <laughs> uh, which is where they would be on a P bass. But that pickup placement, having two of them right where they are, where, right where they will sit on this bass, like it's not going to be a million miles away from a Rickenbacker sound. So I'm super excited to dive straight in. Uh, I'm going to um, put some strings on, mark out everything, and then just get it done. Okay, so I've started with a hiss and a roar, but there simply isn't enough space to fit this pickup in between where the neck pocket ends and uh, the strings. Uh, I, th I was worried that might be a problem. It is a problem. Um, it's not something that I'm going to solve by rushing. <laughs> so sadly, I won't get to play this thing tonight, but uh, I will come back tomorrow and I will solve this problem delicately because this is a fairly delicate problem that needs a delicate solution. So, uh, yes. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, I've gone away and had a good hard think about what is the best way to uh, do this because the, the only real solution to the problem that I've got is that I'm going to have to remove some wood from the neck. Um, Obviously that's not something that I take lightly, but it is sadly the only way to fit that pickup into this gap. Um, so I'm going to have to take the neck off, take some very careful measurements, and then remove as few wood fibres as possible. <laughs> Literally just absolutely the bare minimum to simply fit this pickup into that space. Um, yeah, I, I don't like it but it is sadly the only thing that's going to work here. So I've been pondering the physics involved in a neck like this. Obviously we've got a weak spot. Um, that's in, uh, from the factory. It's the only way they could get the original pickup in was to cut a channel in there. Now 
I'm putting in a different pickup, it's wider, and because of the pole piece spacing, I'm go I've gone on an angle. So, uh, I've sort of roughly marked out about where I'm going to have to cut. I also need to go down at least 4mm, I'd like to give myself an extra millimeter of clearance, which means 5mm, and that is a that gap is already a depth of 6 so we're getting dangerously close to removing more material than I want to. However, I don't know if it's going to be that big of an issue. Here's... but essentially what we've got is a weak point in the neck in this area. From this corner down and this corner down. If the neck is flexing because it's being pulled forward by the strings, these are the pivot points that are going to be weaker than the rest of it. Now. If I'm going to remove some wood from this area here, as long as I don't go down further and make this area here longer and spread the weak points out, I'm actually okay. As long as I'm up a bit and, and sort of just removing a bit of wood from this area, then I'm not actually introducing a, a, a weak point I'm simply removing some wood from this area and that's, you know, the weak, the weak point down there and across there is going to stay largely the same so I'm not actually doing any damage. The other side however <laughs> uh, I am going to have to remove a significant amount um, and that does concern me but again as long as I'm not going down to the level of this surface I'm staying just above it then that weak spot is still going to be located right in that corner um, uh, like I said, it's not an ideal solution. <laughs> if this goes wrong, if I cut some wood out on an angle here and uh, it causes the whole neck to twist up on some weird angle, or, or worse still, break, um, then we have the option to simply slice all of this off to the, to the level of the surface here, slice all of that off and glue a new piece of wood on. <laughs> Strengthen it and then we'll do whatever we need to, to, to fit the pickup after that. Uh, I'm hoping it won't come to that, but you know, I, essentially I'm going to do something that's insane and dangerous, <laughs> but I've got a contingency plan that's not going to be fatal to the base, so um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much the best I can do. I've roughly marked out where I'm going to have to cut, but I've got the other pickup here, I'm going to mark out precisely where it needs to go uh, in order to... Uh, in order to just sort of fit in the gap. I might actually have to pull a bit more out on that side as well, now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, so uh, I will very, very carefully cut and chisel and carve away uh, the bare necessity of what I need to. And hopefully that's all I need to do. Well, you would be hard pressed to make a case for that being an ideal situation. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll just apologise now. That's that's rubbish. I don't like it at all. But uh, I really don't have any other options. And if it does become a problem in the future, then as I say, I can actually just level this entire area, glue a new block on, um, uh, uh, make it nice and nice and sturdy but hopefully it won't be a problem we won't have to do anything I've had to uh, the thing I hate about this the most actually is that I've had to uh, cut into these holes um, there are two lengths of screw uh, this is the long one and that goes in those two holes 
and this is the short one which I'm going to have to make even shorter um, I'm gonna to have to grind a bit down there is there are still threads I can see threads in there I mean there's what is there there's about a centimeter about a centimeter worth of thread still on it so it should still have some pull take the tension and not strip out the wood we will see we will see what happens Okay, uh, it's got one string on it, just very loosely uh, got some tension on it, put a bit more on there. Yeah, so with the other, with the rest of the strings, they're going to pull the neck forward. Uh, I'm going to have to do a proper setup on it, but the distance between string and pickup there is about, like by the time that pulls up and then I adjust everything, I think it's going to land pretty much in the sweet spot. I think. I might be okay. Uh, that's all sitting down pretty flat. It's not sitting down flat on this side because the wires are hanging out, obviously. But I'm going to call that good. Pop that string off. Then uh, we can see uh, how much I've had to remove out of there. Um, it's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I didn't want that. I certainly don't recommend anybody do do it. Um, uh, if, uh, like I would infinitely have preferred this thing to be a neck through because um, then you know you can take as much out as you want effectively well within reason but uh, yeah um, yeah I'm not a fan uh, but it is what it is uh, right I need to uh, run the shielding all around in there because I think that's pretty much done then uh, bridge pickup after that Now, uh, it's worth mentioning that these pickups do come with a little mounting kit. You've got uh, a couple of screws and a couple of little rubber separators. Um, these are for mounting into wood, like you would with a normal P-Base, if you were just dropping one of them in the top. Uh, of course, I'm not doing that, so I've had to come up with my own system for mounting them. Um, this is the base plate. Uh, I have marked out. You'll probably never see them because it's so dirty, but there's a little dot there and a dot there that are pressed in for where the, uh, actually I think it's going to go that way around, uh, for where these two holes at either end of the pickup are. Uh, that's fine, I'm going to drill and tap, I found two screws that have the same thread and I found a tap to match them, so that's fine. The other thing I need to do is put a little separator in there because underneath the pickup we've got these two contacts and they're going to short out against the metal base plate, so I'll stick a little, uh, a little wooden shim just to lift it up off the off the metal uh, and it should be good um, and then yeah just basically wire the two pickups into the electronics and then I can string it up set it up and finally get to grips with how it plays Okay, um, I've got this whole area screwed down with all of its screws because I really just want to test that it's actually working. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit worried that those two contacts, which caused me to need to put a shim on this one, 
I don't know if I've got enough clearance between those and the shielding that I put in here, so a quick test just to make sure that it's all working. Okay, that is all working. The very last thing I need to do will be to uh, file the nut down because of course we've taken you know, a reasonable amount of material off the top of the fingerboard so the nut's going to be ridiculously high. Uh, but it is, it does appear to be carved out to the right, the, the right gauge of string uh, and it's quite a nice shape on top so I'll probably just uh, sh take a little bit off the bottom uh, a little bit at a time until I get it down to the level where the strings are just off the fingerboard right at the nut uh, and that will be as low as it needs to go. Right, I have been through to the studio and I've had a bit of a play on it and we're good. It's good. We're skirting into upright bass territory sound-wise, uh, which I wasn't really expecting, but thinking about what we've put in here, yeah, I can sort of see how that would happen, and it has. Um, uh, there's one last thing I've got to do, and that is sort out the nameplate. Now, um, a uh, YouTube user named Pebble Bass commented, and he said that I should make the nameplate out of uh, the same stuff that I've made uh, that out of, and he's absolutely right, because uh, putting that up there doesn't really match, it doesn't really look right, and I do have an offcut which is just the right size to put that on there. Uh, I also have an engraving machine for carving out the uh, carving the logo out of there. However, this is a complicated shape. I don't have enough time or expertise in the engraving field to be able to uh, to do that without screwing it up. So what I'm actually going to do in the future is I'm going to get this scanned and computer engraved into that. Uh, see uh, a future video about how I figure out how that works. But for now, I have simply photoshopped that. <laughs> uh, and I've got, I've got this uh, this awful old pickguard, I'm literally just going to cut the shape out of there, and then uh, double-sided tape that onto that, and we'll have Tortoise Shell Westminster logo. And yes, I, I know the colour's not quite right when I took the uh, the photo of the pick guard. Uh, the white balance on the camera must have gone wrong and it's come out a bit yellow. I'm sorry, it's only temporary.
and there you have it from uh, from an absolute wreck <laughs> sold online for a pittance it has been brought back to life it's great <laughs> the, the tone of the thing is undeniably huge uh, it, it wasn't the tone I was expecting to get out of it I was hoping for a little more high end uh, but again these weren't my first choice of pickups but I have to say I'm absolutely delighted with the way it does sound it's amazing. <laughs> um, I, I wish I could say that it plays amazing. This neck was always humongous. It is still humongous. You're not going to play a lot of fast, flashy, fretless licks on the thing. That said, a lighter gauge of string would probably help. And yeah, at the other the only other things I'm really not in love with the tortoise shell pickguard. I think it's a bit too much visually. It's very overpowering. Uh, I'm thinking I will sort of see if I can learn to live with it for a wee while. When I get a new bridge, uh, I will probably make a white pickguard, I'll revert to the old nameplate, and we'll, we'll see how that sits. Um, but uh, that uh, will be coming up sometime in the future. <laughs> we'll see how long it takes me to get around to that, because I've got quite a few other projects sort of in the pipeline. But uh, aside from that, um, I'd just like to say I very much hope you enjoyed watching the process of uh, bringing this one back from the dead. And uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. And I'll see you really soon. Thanks.